Hello my soccer universe, at the end of the group stage of the Asian Cup, the last game just finished a couple of hours ago, so I decided to shoot it and I know it will post the next day. But yeah, gotta say that the Asian Cup last group uh, games did not have maybe the, the drama that we had at the AFCON, um, because uh, the competition is not as equal, but we had at least one major nation going out. Uh, and we had quite a few surprise qualifiers as well. First time qualifiers in there. I think for, to me the two main stories are of course Tajikistan and Palestine qualifying. Also Syria for the first time in the next stage, uh, which came a little bit of a surprise to me. But then I guess the tournament has only recently expanded in 2019. So uh, before that it was straight to the quarterfinals, which was a little bit more difficult. But I guess the biggest uh, uh, drama was surrounding South Korea and we'll talk about the game who at one point were looking like they're winning the group or they were actually uh, not potentially even in threat of finishing third, I mean still advancing. Then they're winning the group which would pit them with Japan and then they're not winning the group and suddenly they find themselves opposite of Japan but still having to play Saudi Arabia and then Iran and no matter how it would have panned out or not Iran, I think Australia, no matter how it would have panned out, it would have been a gauntlet ahead. And this South Korea side looks so, um, I mean, they have the star of the tournament. I think the biggest star of the tournament is Hyun Min Son, of course, of Spurs. I don't think there's any uh, bigger star there. But the team and unfortunately, I, it's almost what I expected when you hire Klinsmann. Um, doesn't quite do it to to be honest. They're leaky. They have great players in there. So I'm curious if they will get it together and go on a run. I think they have it in them or if it will be an early exit at the hand of a nation that almost has home field advantage. Meanwhile, the most uh, how do I say the most convincing team are the hosts. Qatar. Easy win even against China, who, who they eliminate, after, you know, just hang, hang in there, nil, nil, then you bring on the cavalry and you win even that one, one, nil. And yeah, I Qatar have a pretty soft schedule ahead as well. So another deep run is coming. And as we'll see, the bracket is very in interesting because we have two very loaded quadrants, fortunately on opposite drafts, as I said, of the round, and two relatively easy ones. And I'm curious who will come out of these. But let's go, um, you know, group by group uh, over the last matches and let's start in group A. It was the only one that was happening as, as I already said, Qatar, easy 1-0 win over China, uh, playing a B squad. Yes, they were hanging on in the first first half. China really tried and then they bring on the Kai Kavali and Hal Haidos in the 66 makes it 1-0 for Qatar and they never look back and for China this meant elimination because with only two points at this point are uh, looking really 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 bad. The fall of China uh, is, is one of the most overlooked stories I would say. But where there's shade there's low loss of line hit Tajikistan first time qual qualifiers and yes we can talk all about Tajikistan and uh, their league blah blah blah. Um, in any case they take on Lebanon and find themselves down early in the first half after having a goal all already disallowed for offside but then El Zayn gets set off for, for Lebanon and suddenly the move is coming. Uh, Jailov Again, another offside goal, so Tajikistan were egg egg in there, but then Umar Baev in the 80th and in stoppage chef Kamarokulov make it 2-1 for Tajikistan. Tajikistan, the rank outsiders in the group are qualifying. I think that's one of the best stories that we had so far. Uh, in Group B, Australia and Uzbekistan played a 1-1 draw. It was a boil penalty, gave Australia a lead just, just before Evan and Turgon Boyev. Uh, get the equalizer in the 78th eighth minute. Have not seen much of the of, of the game. Probably a little bit disappointing for Australia, but Uzbekistan have been a really good side, so not not surprising. Again, the other big story is of course the Syria get the one 0 win over India. Late goal, and yes, late goal. When I say it this way, I very often see very long stoppage times at the Asian Cup, almost too long. To, but this one nil actually saw Syria move, move on for the first time ever. So huge celebrations there 
as well and you know you're kind of in the era well so there is serious support for these teams um similarly then also uh for palestine let, let's go that who get a 3-0 uh, win also qualifying for the first time ever uh and and, and, and they get it done earlier i mean the bug order in the 12th minute and then uh just after they have al kambar in the 48th and again the bug in the 60th minute make it a proper result and this is the first time uh, that hong kong have really beaten been beaten by a major scoreline as well iran honestly i have i have, have to say the score and two one is flattering to the uae they were in the first half non on non, non the field taremi give iran already an early lead uh they have a holy sadek goal this this allowed but it was all iran in the first half then a little bit out, out of nowhere uh uae get, get a penalty through al hassani uh but it is saved and then taremi just on the other side uh as, he's, as moon makes it 2-1 and Al Hassani gets his gold very, very deep in stop stop shot, but at this time, uh, Iran should have been clear already. And that's the one thing that worries me about, about Iran. I think overall they're playing well, but they're not really converting the chance. And Mohebi also had a, another goal distance of offside. So you see kind of a theme there evolving. Then uh, we had actually head to head between Japan and Indonesia for second place. Believe it or not, however, this was never really in doubt. Japan, similar like, like Iran, fully in control of, of, of this game, creating chances, not converting enough. I mean, it was a Ueda penalty who gave them early the lead, and Ueda right after half at the Ritz Doan, as a uh, season maybe, but in, in between, I think Nakamura hit the, um, the post. There were multiple chances for Ritz Doan as well. It should have been already really, really comfortable. It gets them comfortable. Uh, by a third goal in the 88th and then Walsh very late on adds one back for Indonesia and Indonesia team that actually move on as well. So even if Japan would have lost, which would not have been good for them, but they would have moved move, 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 move on. So uh, we'll see that. Uh, in a dead rubber, uh, Iraq actually had to fight a little bit. Vietnam had a one nil lead and you know, Vietnam potentially, but you know, uh, with head, head, head you could not get past in Indonesia, so you needed to hope for a three-way tie with Japan, and that would have been weird, so it uh, was very, very slim, slim chance for them. Uh, but they had the one and a half to lead, but then they get a yellow-red, says, as I sent off, and Sulak and Hussein, the hero you know, in against Japan, uh, turn the game around, Hussein misses a penalty, then Vietnam equal as a 991st, and then 12th minute of stoppage time and yet there's not Chrissy Hussein and again we with the penalty so he is among the top scorers of this Asian Cup so far. And then today uh <laughs> let's say it's Bahrain surprised everyone because it was all will it Jordan will it be Jordan or will it be South South, South Korea who, who will finish first into the group? No it is Bahrain who actually get a win uh, through use of goal in the 34th minute. But the drama, and that happened early, early on at, at, at a point where uh, South Korea had a one lead to Jung Woo uh, Young, the Lee Kang In uh, assist. And in the first half, it was all South Korea, especially the last 15 minutes. It looked like handball. Malaysia didn't get out of their own box. And paired with the 1-0 over Bahrain, you really felt it is all safe going South Korea's way. And then right after the half, in just a really short su 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 succession, Halim and Ayman with a penalty turn it around. And Malaysia have a 2-1 lead. Clearly, South Korea are shocked. Um, but then they put themselves together and again, it looks like handball. South Korea really putting all the pressure on the Malaysian team. And I have, I have to say, I really like the atmosphere in the stadium because there was a huge Malaysian fan, fan block. There was a huge South Korean fan block as, as well. And whenever Son was there, I mean, everyone went crazy. I said, biggest star of the tour tournament. The equalizer for South Korea came in the 83rd minute when a Lee Kang in free kick hits the cross, but then the glove of the goalie has me. And in it net again, touching the cross, but it was an amazing free free kick. It was really unlucky for the goalie that it went this way. It's also unlucky that this is counted now as an own own goal. Then 10, 10, 10 minutes later, and this was a huge stoppage time. I mean, it almost went 20 minutes over. Uh, yes, there were uh, VAR reviews in there, but I think it was almost a little bit um, overdoing it. In any case, a penalty is given, and Son Heung-min 
Converts 94th minute. You could see in the celebrations he was not. Uh, he was more relieved than he was happy about the, uh, that they have, have have got the win. And then um, the Malayan coach, who actually is one of the coolest looking coaches I've seen in a long while since Bruno Mitsu. I uh, say here the dad that the vibe brings on uh, Roman Morales. I mean, there was no chance for Malaysia, but they get one shot. Later on, in the 15th minute of stoppage time, they get the 3-3 equalizer and they get their, their, their one point that they probably were out for. And it also means that South Korea only finished second in the group. Now, I already said it and we'll see it when we look at, at that bracket. Um, first place would have meant you played Japan. Second place means you most likely would play Saudi Arabia, although at that point Saudi Arabia probably had a choice who, who they want to play again. I mean, it's whatever you choose, you choose wrong, I guess. I think South Korea wanted to win the group to make a statement. They did not do that. And I said, South, South, South Korea, if they are going to win this Asian Cup, it's going to be a really, really, really hard turn. Uh, Kyrgyzstan Oman play only a 1 1 draw, which was not good enough for Oman, who still had a chance of, of, of advancing with Saudi Arabia and Thailand. Play out a 0 0. Uh, again, disappointing Saudi per performance. Radif misses uh, a Caesar penalty saved early on in the, in the 12th minute. I think they scored a total of four offside goals, but the longer the game went, the less uh, convincing it was. Kudos for uh, Thailand. I said in the Asian jersey review that we don't will not see this fourth jersey. We saw it, and I'm very very happy that we could see this jersey. And so yeah, this sets up now the bracket as follows. Let's talk the upper quadrant. Tajikistan against UAE. Uh, UAE should be considered fave. If ever there, Tajikistan rank outsiders. Is there another up upset in that UAE have not been convincing? Iraq against Jordan. I think Iraq should, should be the big favorites there. I'm curious to see uh, whether they can uh, continue on their role. Then we have a neighboring duel, if you like. Australia against Indonesia. Uh, <laughs> um, will be an interesting one. We saw that Indonesia uh, can do, can get something go, but I think Australia should move on, probably just, just, just a one nil. Then the first big one, the big clash, Saudi Arabia against South Korea. And I said it in a preview and we have, have been saying it, no matter where South Korea end up, they have a rough road ahead. Iran against Syria um, should be Iran's relatively easy. Bahrain against Japan, if Japan don't win that, 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 that game, then they really don't deserve moving on. And then you see Qatar against Palestine. It should be a relatively easy one for Qatar. And then Uzbekistan against Thailand. Again, another outsider uh, clash. If we look at the, uh, how, how, how the bracket depends on further, and you see here the uh, model properties, of course, UAE, Iraq. Um, I, one would really think that Iraq can, can do it. But then you see South, South Korea. If you all Saudi Arabia, yeah, you get uh, all Australia. And then it gets actually easier. That's a really, really weird bracket. Similarly down, I mean, Iran and uh, Japan probably relatively, they have to meet each other. The two best teams, at least by rating, will meet potentially in the quarterfinals. Japan would still be fave if we were moving on there. And then Qatar against Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan would win a round. Uh, that would, would be interesting. I think Uzbekistan have, have been in quarterfinals before. So I would be curious to see them moving forward. I think, uh, although Qatar and Uzbekistan are very ev evenly matched, I would actually think uh, Qatar will move on with home 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 and then have to play Japan. Japan team is also not very convincing. And if it's Iran, that would also be a very interesting ma ma matchup. Uh, whoever comes out of the Saudi Arabia, South Korea, Australia will probably play Iraq. I think that is a realist, a realist let's to say. At the moment, the model predicts a South Korea-Japan final, although I personally do not believe that. Um, from the upper bracket, uh, bracket, I actually wouldn't be surprised if it's Iraq or Saudi Arabia coming out, honestly. Uh, and from the lower one, Iran, Qatar, that's where I think my head would be at. So let's see where this will go. Uh, as for the overall favorites, Japan. Despite finishing first, still top yet as that highly ranked everywhere, Australia, Iran. South, South Korea, as I said, have a really, really tough, tough road. And the same thing goes for South, Saudi Arabia. And suddenly Iraq finds themselves in sixth spot because you have a relatively easy route going forward. Now, 
we see when will the round of 16 begin. It will start on Sunday with Australia against Indonesia, then Tajikistan, UAE, on Monday, Iraq, Jordan, Qatar, Palestine. You really should try to make it uh, Tuesday, Saudi Arabia, South Korea. I think that's a big one. I'm also interested in Bahrain, Japan. Uzbekistan, Thailand is probably for... It's a very bad kick of time too, to be honest. I, will, I won't be able to watch. Same thing goes for Bahrain, Japan, unfortunately, and then Iran against Syria. So yeah, that was it from me. Please let, let me know what you thought about the happenings at, at the Asian Cup. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon more about things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!